I didn't think I would be making a living at doing this. I mean, I had no idea that these bands were going to become so, so popular, so famous. I would have taken a lot more photographs of them if I had known. Our first U.S. tour was a total failure. You know, we didn't make more than 90 bucks at any show in the whole U.S. You know, it's like they hated us everywhere we went. We're doing basically the same thing we were doing in 85, and now people like us. I don't know why. Let me put things in perspective for you. Five years ago, this is a sleepy little coastal fishing village. Now, could we have the camera pan out to the skyline here? This kind of economic development is directly related to what John and I have done to promote Seattle. That's what's become of the great punk rock party house of the mid 80s. <laughs> it's so harsh, you used to be this tiny little shack, like set way back in these terrible, like big weeds in the middle of this, these uh, beautiful homes. And now it, look, it is a beautiful home. <laughs> I would love to, when, I, when about 20 years from now, be playing in like a, some kind of like super loungy soul band with the horn section or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that we'll be, probably all be playing be in R&B bands in Pioneer Square. Probably the same, <laughs> probably the same R&B band on Pioneer Square. <laughs> Little sister, don't you? Wow, what did I do right in a past life or whatever that I get to do this with my three really good friends? I get to be in a band and make music with these people, it's a really incredible experience. We just play music when we when we can and, and do shows and, and record when we have songs. Every now and then we find out Seattle got really famous. <laughs> and we didn't. <laughs> and that's not too bad, that's okay. 